Bud Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. Violet Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure in the story, Reservoir for Murder. The Green Hornet strikes again. company says I can take all the risks I want and they'll pay all. So why should I worry? Where's the phone around here? Uh, the only ones in the construction shop. Never mind, buddy. You warned me. You did your duty. Hey, wait. Time, time. Reporters wait for no man. I'm climbing that scaffold. I want to see this with my own eyes. They built this reservoir with knitting needles instead of tea squares. The sentinel's going to hear about it. Hey, what's, the, what's happening to that scaffold? Sergeant, the whole production's going to cave in. Did you see that? Did I see it? Holy mackerel. The piece of you see this thing in the truck. Gangway, i got to get that phone. No publisher's office. Hey, Casey, this is Lowry. Where's the boss? Oh, the man, Lowry, you sound excited. Where's the boss? Give me the boss. It's coming down around my ears. Casey, is that Lowry? Yes, it's Lowry, Mr. Reed. All right. Hello. Hello, Lowry. Boss, I said with the McCoy. One section is caving in. The rest of our going? This case got Gunnigan. Yes, sir. Here he is. Gunnigan, Reed talking. I've got Lowry on the phone. Construction wreck at the reservoir. Have a rewrite man caught in. You got it? Got it. Okay, Lowry, you give it to the rewrite man. Okay, boss. Can you see what's going on? Sure, I have a ringside seat up in the construction shack. I can see from the window. All set, Lowry. The rewrite band's listening. Go ahead. I'm about 200 yards away from the concrete wall. They've been showing up one section because it had a crack in it, but it isn't a crack anymore. Hold it. There goes another chunk. You hear that? Man, it's a lucky thing there wasn't any water in that reservoir yet. Half the people in Maple Valley be getting their feet wet up to their ears. The rest of the concrete seems to be okay, but that one section... Yeah? They're pulling the men away from it. Guess it's going to change. They're running like this. Looks like it's going to be more than one month before the governor dedicates the Maple Valley Reservoir Project after all. There'll be an investigation. Hold it. Here comes the big one. 150 tons of concrete. Going. Going. Come on, light. Come. Well, flash to me on the front page. 
No wonder that concrete wall caved in. Holy mackerel, this girl is... <laughs> hey, let go of me. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's just... <laughs> Very amusing. Where's the board? Oh, I knew you'd try to fight somebody bigger than you someday. Or was it a whole gang? Not the case. It was one guy with a ten-ton blackjack in his face. Well, uh, so that's why you didn't come back to the office last night or phone in. Fighting, huh? Holy mackerel. What kind of a reception is this? So help me, boss. I got this while I was on the job. You did? Sure. I was checking over that reservoir after dark. And just when I find something good, blam, some monkey jumps me and sends me to dreamland. Didn't wake up till this morning. Well, you found something good. What do you mean? What I said, boss. I found enough to prove that crash was no accident. Good crash. No accident? No, sir. Not when the steel supports that are supposed to be embedded in that concrete are sort of halfway through. What? Yeah. Gosh, Mr. Reed, and the whole state is blaming Jeff Thorndike, saying that he's responsible. Oh, if that concrete was deliberately weak. It was, boss. Well, Lowry, you're going back there. Miss Case, get a photographer to go back with Lowry and take pictures of that damage. Call the police. Whoa, 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 boss. Mm-mm. What? No dice. You'd be wasting your time. Don't be silly, Lowry. Why, it would make a front-page story that would scoop the town. Hold in this case, just a moment. Go on, Lowry. We'd be wasting our time. Why? Because those steel girders aren't there anymore. Go on. When I woke up, I started to look again. Boy, somebody cleared those girders out of there like Lewis took bear. What good is a story without proof? <laughs> Now, gentlemen, this way, please. Okay, Thorndike, keep your chin up. I'm glad you're here, Reed. It's good to have someone backing me up. Senator just got the X out for me. Can't say I blame him. Caven wasn't your fault, Thorndike. Yes, I know the Senator. It was, but someday we'll prove it. I doubt very much if you can prove that, Reed. Hello, Senator. Hello. You may go, Miss Vazine. Yes, sir. Well, Thorndike, as engineer in charge of that construction job, you've managed to put me in the soup. There's only one way I can satisfy the public. To come right to the point, did you bring along your resignation? I can't understand what went wrong. I'm not there. interested in alibis. I'm interested in results. You didn't get them. I understand. Here's my resignation. Now, just a minute. Yes? The rat deserts the sinking ship. If that's aimed at me, Reed. It is? I hit this department. I'm responsible for what happens. You're also responsible for the men under you. Yet you're making Thorndike the ghost. I'm putting the blame where it belongs. If you read the sentinel, there might be some doubt that what happened was Thorndike's fault. Poppycock. The story cooked up to make circulation. You know, Jim... Not from the sentinel, sir. There's no proof. Your reporter made that story up, and you believe him. I believe him, yes. But he didn't make it up. I know my reporter. And get this, Shevlin. The public has faith in the sentinel, too. There's no time for... Which is just what I said. You're yapping about the interest of the public. Well, get this, Shuffle. The Sentinel has a circulation that's almost as big as all the others combined. And this morning, after our story, our switchboard was flooded with phone calls. Phone calls about what? About the cave and at the new reservoir. Shuffle, if you're interested in public opinion, you might be interested to know that the public does believe that story in the Sentinel. At least enough so that they don't blame Thorndike. If you want a record of their names and address... No, no, I don't doubt you. Uh, uh, Thorndike, this, uh, this puts a different complexion on things. Uh, Shevlin is always sensitive to public opinion. Aren't you, Shevlin? Yes, Senator, yes. do you mean my resignation? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm not accepting it, Thorndike. There, uh, in the wastebasket. I don't know what to say. Never mind. Just go ahead and make sure the job is finished. And finished right. It'll be done right. I'm still puzzled about what I just... Let's go. Can't you see the senator wants to be alone to eat his own words? Goodbye, Shovelin. Next time, don't be too anxious to throw out a good work. Goodbye, Senator. It'll be done right. I'll make sure it's done right. Goodbye. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish that job. And when it's done, I'll make absolutely sure Paul Dyke loses his job. I'll make it positive. Here, it's 
Why, why can you fool? I don't want to be seen. You've heard Thorndyke is going ahead with the construction work. Yeah. Thorndyke is too good a man. If he keeps going, he'll end up with my job. Yeah. That puts it up to you, Bender. This time, I want a big accident, you understand. Big enough so that not even the Sentinel can keep Thorndyke in his job. I'll be finished with the construction in three weeks, Senator. The water will be piling up behind the dam. A whole lot of water, Senator. That's it, Bender. I think you understand. Yeah, I understand. If the water should break that retaining wall and flood the valley, there'd be a lot of damage. Thorndyke uh, couldn't explain that. Yeah, Senator. And besides, there wouldn't be any evidence. The water would wash away every sign. <laughs> okay, Senator, you can count on it. There's going to be a flood. During the following weeks, while the damage was being repaired and the dam completed, Ed Lowry made frequent trips to the Maple Valley construction job. And his reports back to the Sentinel were all the same. He saw no sign of trouble. But he wasn't the only one on watch. When darkness fell each night, a small man, inconspicuous and slight, prowled around the reservoir. That man was Cato, Britt Reed's Filipino valet. Yes, Mr. Britt. I observed Maple Valley Reservoir at night, as you direct. They weren't seen, Cato? No, sir. Back home in Philippines, I learned how to move silent, like younger cat. What did you find out, Cato? Is there anything wrong? Hmm. No. Why do you say it that way? I'm not certain, Mr. Britt. But there's one man. I observed him at night. Act very strange. Strange? Nothing very definite. Only he acts like a man who doing wrong. A man named Bender. Bender, eh? Name is familiar? Yeah, he's the man who told Larry to stay away when that section of wall fell. I wonder. Yes? I wonder if he's the one who could have knocked Larry out that same night. Sure. It's possible, yes. Keep watching, Cato. Pretty soon that job will be completed. We don't want anything to happen. done, men. Thanks for your work. The Maple Valley Reservoir is a project you can be proud of. <laughs> Senator Seven, will you close the water pipes? It'll take about a week to get the water high enough in the reservoir to start using it. That's the way the weather is, Thorndike. It's raining up in the mountains. Until the reservoir fires. I just press this button? Yes. Green Hornet, 
<laughs> Go ahead, Cato. We're going to find this man Bender. We'll get the answer. Cato flipped on the headlights. A photoelectric cell registered the beam, started a small electric motor. Silently, a huge section of apparently solid wall swiveled upward. The sleek black car rolled into the street, turned and headed north toward Maple Valley. And behind it, the wall once more dropped into place. Bumping into a guy this way. Stark enough to black out it. This is a gun in your ribs. Hey, what is this? A stick up? Who are you? That man with the green hornet. Come with me, Bender. What do you want? Now come with me. You're going to answer some questions. Than it is here in the city, Senator. Yes, Miss Darcy. I, uh, I won't need you anymore tonight. You know. Yes, sir. What's the matter with Bender? He's supposed to call me on my private phone. The water should be pouring into the first of all. I want to know. I tried to get him myself. He isn't home. But private phone, that's it. Hello. Is this you, Bender? Hello, Shetland. Who is this? You were expecting a call from Bender, weren't you? Bender, what? This, uh, <clears throat> this number is private. You're making a mistake. Bender's right here. It's no mistake. I know all about it, Shevlin. About what? The Maple Valley Reservoir. I want $10,000. Who are you? This is the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet? $10,000 and your scheme blows up right in your face. You can't bluff me. Not a bluff. Remember, I've got Bender here. It wouldn't be hard to get him to talk. Now make up your mind, Shevlin. Ten grand or right. have it. All right. At least I'm willing to talk to you about it. That's more like it. Play nice, and your apple cart may not be tipped over, huh? I'll meet you in the valley about a mile below the reservoir where Route 22 and Highway 16 split. I, uh, I know where. Tomorrow night at 11. Be there, Shevlin. Don't forget. <laughs> Give him gas from gun, Mr. Britt. He in his car, unconscious. What do we do between now and tomorrow night, please? Can you take care of Bender? Oh, I keep him unconscious till then, yes. Good. I'll take the black beauty and head back to town. I want to be at the Sentinel tomorrow. I'll meet you at 11 in the evening. Oh, where, where is meeting? The junction of Route 22 and State Highway 16 in the valley here, Cato. And take care of Bender. Casey. 5.30. Will you come along, Mr. Thorndyke and Mr. Reed's office? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice guy, Thorndyke. I like him. I wonder if he'll get shoveled down. Yeah, I hope so. Somebody ought to. Yeah. Uh, still raining. All day and since yesterday. This rain has me a little worried, Reed. Maple Valley Reservoir. Oh, don't be foolish, Thorndyke. You have men up there, haven't you? Well, yes, but it's something unforeseen. Oh, forget it. Right? Say, Lowry. What is, boss? I've got to head for home. I uh, have an appartment tonight. Oh, well, you and Miss Case keep Mr. Thorndyke from getting the jitters. <laughs> now that his work's done, he has plenty of time for worrying, so keep him <laughs> occupied. Oh, uh, you might show him around the Sentinel. Perhaps he's never seen a great newspaper at work. Well, Mr. Thorndyke, you've seen everything from Listen the Listen to that thunder. Still raining. <laughs> Give up, Casey. The guy's hopeless. Here it is, 10.30 at night. Outside of eating dinner, we've been giving him a conductor tour of the Sentinel, and all he thinks about is the weather. I tell you, Casey, that's right. Oh, Mr. Thorndike, I've been calling you from Senator Shepard's office all evening. I couldn't get you, so I finally came over. Miss Darcy, what's the matter? Oh, I don't know exactly. 
A phone call came for the senator. It wasn't on his private line, so I took it. Mr. Thorndike, it, it was a man reminding the senator to be at the junction of Route 22 and Highway 6 here at 11 tonight. The junction... In the valley? Yes, and to make $10,000. But the senator was gone already. I couldn't tell him. Oh, sister, calm down. You're all excited. Why oh, shouldn't I be? The, the man who called was the green horse. The horse? Holy mackerel, this is a case for the police. The police? Joel, hold on the board case. You tell Gunnigan to get Petra a page one scoop. 11 o'clock, huh? We might not make it by 11, but we'll be there soon after. Come on, Thorndike. <laughs> Oh, poor fellow must be out of his head. Conchester. Conchester. 